<laughs> Welcome everybody to Cycle Dirt's podcast episode 117. Got myself, Mike Stewart, and my lovely and talented co-host Dave Dalton here today. How you doing, Dave? Good. Good to see yeah. you. Got to spend like 24 hours. I know. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> uh we originally had uh Lori Lee loan uh scheduled as a guest um of velo girls and savvy bike but uh she got vaccinated and she's not feeling good and so we're gonna we're gonna have to reschedule her but um dave and i just came off of doing well, something first of all, this yeah. about sorry mike but let's i mean this well, i'm excited you can't I want help to... yourself i know i know but i like to I'm excited to have this woman back, Lori. I mean, it, it, like people, when we're on, when she's on, you've got to listen to this. I mean, the California Age Ride, uh, paracycling, the, the tandem, you know, getting three bronze medals in the uh, Paralympics, uh, mountain bike coaching. I mean, yeah, just, she's geez, what a resume. Holy yeah. cow. And she's from my she's from my hometown. Well, she went to school in Syracuse. So. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Which is has nothing to do with freaking cycling, but it's, <laughs> uh, yeah. So no, that's cool. She's well, yeah, be no, a, she she's going to be a good guest, like all of our yeah. guests, Dave. Yeah, uh, you sound surprised. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> yeah. Just, but anyway, plug, hopefully, that's all. hopefully she'll uh, she feels better, and we can get her Speedy back recovery, on the schedule. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, but Dave and I did something that we haven't done yet before, and that was uh, we appeared in public at an event as the Cycle Jerks, and uh, I think it went pretty good. The event was the Mount Diablo Challenge. Uh, obviously, we had Mark and Ragu on for the bonus episode, episode and uh, you know, leading up to the event, and then to go to the event and hang out and uh, meet some of the participants and the organizers. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I got to I, I concur. I mean, it had been a while since I even well, it's been a long time since I've written it, but a long time since I've just gone over there. Um, it was super exciting to see um, the the participation. I guess they had a thousand. I think they had a thousand. That's up from a cup, you know, up double from when the last time I think I was there. Um, you know, we always talk a lot about the 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 vibe around a gravel event you know with the beer truck and food and all that and i think that they captured that a little bit so you didn't have people just getting back to their cars and going and uh heading home mm -hmm. um so yeah and then just so congratulations to the valley spokesman racing team for uh putting that on and for being such gracious hosts to us and in helping us out get out there so it was great stuff yeah, and uh, they had, um, to your point, they had 838 finishers this year. So uh, I know Mark was saying they're kind of capped at 1,000. They had 1,000 registrants, and uh, some some people that register can't make it, and then others uh, don't finish for whatever reason. So um, well, Because yeah. it's a long, big fucking hill. <laughs> 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 There's probably yeah. a pretty good reason why some people don't finish. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But it was cool because, uh, you know, we just, I got reunited with a bunch of people that I've known for a long time and haven't seen. And um, so that was always, that's always good. And met some new people in the vendor area. We were in the vendor area. We're kind of on the outskirts, but hey, yeah, we'll take it. And uh, we, we were right next to a thing called Stretch Lab. This is not a paid endorsement, by the way, but Stretch Lab has a location in San Ramon and the gal there, uh, she gave me a free 10 minute stretch and that was awesome. Uh, I'm definitely going to go check out their facility in person and uh, they do like a 50 minute, like the, you do a 25 minute or a 50 minute and the, the first 50 minute is $50. And uh, they go through a whole bunch of different stretch protocols. And she did a thing with my hamstrings. And my hamstrings haven't felt that loose. I can't even remember. So, yeah, yeah I'm going to go give that a try. Pretty cool. And these, they, they say they're legit. Like, if I was talking to the woman that was there. I got, I'm sorry, don't remember her name. But, mm -hmm. like, she's 
is, you know, certified sports medicine and lots of different disciplines. So these are just not people that are, you know, working part time and in there. They're they're they got they've got cred and uh, credentials. And uh, so you'd uh, quite literally be in good hands, I think, if you went there. And again, they're not paying us to say this. It was just um, I was just listening to Mike groan and moan as he got stretched. So uh, it must have had some effect. And Dave yeah. doesn't do any stretching in his own life, and he refused to get on the table and let the gal work about. I don't understand at all. He's sucking down Diet Cokes. He doesn't stretch. He drinks beer. I mean, what the hell? This guy calls himself a cyclist. I'm a hot mess. I can't even bend and touch my toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. I thought you were kidding. No. Oh, my no. gosh. Okay. No. Yep. Well, uh, d- Yeah. We, we, uh, where do we go? Uh, but th- no, it's just there was a lot of good. I mean, the people from Save Mount Diablo were there. Uh, Hyper Threads, um, yeah. lots of just a good, uh, well, strange one. But next to us was a woman. She actually makes quilts for veterans. It had nothing to do with cycling, but she's just out. Make you know, you know, a veteran that had well, boots on the ground and saw action. They'll make them a quilt. I mean, yeah. it's just so. That's really of, cool good variety there well so uh yeah and the, and of course there's always um you know somebody that gets up the mountain fastest uh at the challenge uh as ragu pointed out it's not not necessarily a race but then mark corrected him it is a race and a challenge so you can go there to challenge yourself to see if you can what's your fastest time you can get up there but then there are those that are racing there were some uh really incredible times posted um near near world tour level times uh pretty wild so um i got uh i got the top three men and the top three women and their corresponding times go for it i'll rattle it off uh we got first the fastest time on the day was uh jafani stefani jafani stefani that's a a great name yeah holy smokes (laughs) yeah Straight straight out of san francisco uh showed up and dropped a 44 49 so that's anytime you're in the 40s is a that's a yeah it's hard to even fathom and 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 listen i want to put these times in perspective too i um everyone that i've spoken to said as calm as it was down at where we were at monta vista it was a monster headwind um when you got up there and a couple commented too, but a, a couple years ago when we were up there and it was like gale force winds that was blowing and and the people that were racing it will say that it cost them three to five minutes. Yeah. And people yesterday were saying they, they think they got hurt by about three minutes. So take a couple minutes off of everybody's time just to put it in perspective. So no, there's no taking minutes off, Dave. No, that's I'm no. just saying that when you're saying 44 and 45, you, you, that's blazing fast, right? Because yeah. But yeah. it, that year that I, the last year I did it, it was super windy and Ranger Carl was saying, oh, take, you could easily take three minutes off. I'm like, yeah, at the time's the time. Yeah. It's always windy. It, it, there's always, it's not always windy, but it seems like at the Diablo challenge, it's always windy because of the time of year it is. Right. All right. Back to the results. Uh, Quinn Felton out of Santa Cruz. Also not a bad name, but. I mean, no one's Giovanni Stefani's got the best name. It's just straight up. There you go. All right. All right. So uh 44 55. So he was six seconds off the pace. So that must have been uh and then third place was Nathan Martin out of Danville. And he was at 44 57. So you can imagine these three dudes coming in hot at the finish, and uh somebody had to win, but nobody beating Giovanni Stefani. Yeah. All right, and then uh on the women's side. Uh, we had Kristen Vetterlein from Albany. She came in at 55, 28, very impressive time considering her age. And I'm not going to tell anyone what her age is, but her age makes that time very impressive. Eleanor Wiseman, uh, out of Oakland at 56, 57 and, uh, Chloe Mavis, uh, at 57, 56 came in third. She's out of Berkeley and she rides for the Monarch team that is supported by Liv. So that's kind of cool. And, 
And we had uh, Helena on here, the uh, the the founder of Monarch, who was yeah. one of our guests. Was, they had incredible representation. I saw a lot of those jerseys. Yeah, there. I did too. The, the jerseys are cool. It's a good design and it really stands out. So um, they're easy to spot. But we did not see logo. Helena yesterday. She no. might have been there, but we didn't see I, her. I searched on her name. I didn't see her. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, all in all, it was really good event. I, and I want, to, uh, I want to bring up one thing that I'm just blown away by in t for two reasons. First of all, interestingly enough, we had um, Vanessa on uh, last week and we were talking about mountain biking and the, you know, the uptick in youth mountain biking, but we didn't see the same thing necessarily in road. Right. But, but when I started doing the search here of like under 10, uh, 10 to 13, uh, age categories, 14 to 15, 16 to 17, there were a lot of kids there out there. And I'm going to submit that I know that there were some that were doing it because it was a family activity, like uh, somebody under 10, I think, did it in two hours. And I, you know, I know a guy that was there just uh, pacing his kid up, up the mountain. Yeah. But there was, I think the 16, 17 year old was close to like the low 50s, 14 and 15 year old winner was 54 minutes, 10 yep. to 13, 57 minutes. So I'm going to submit that this was not just recreational riders. So it gave me yeah. hope that, you know, that there is maybe a resurgence in the, you know, maybe it's not as big as the road, but there's a, a maybe a resurgence in you cycling and the people that are doing it seem pretty hardcore. So it's kind of, I was, stoked to see that yeah i've got uh one of my one of my accounts um in modesto world of wheels they have a employee joel luna and he's got a he's got a family of young racers that are they were both uh both two of his boys were there yesterday and the, it's a cycling family and they take it very serious the one of the sons just got second in districts and uh, i was talking to them about maybe having the the whole crew on and uh, yeah. kind of talk about growing up racing bikes and what it takes to be, you know, at that level. And, but it's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, he, he showed me their, uh, their Zwift room. They got four tax trainers all lined up. They got monitors and they all get on there and just go to town. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. But the kids don't really do climbs because they're, uh, but you know, they're tough. doing, they're doing road races Yeah, and there's not like, they don't do climbing, but yeah, uh, I think one of them came in what, sub 55, 55 yeah. minutes. I mean, I think he had fourth. Yeah. Crazy fast. That's awesome. Anyways, yeah. it's just, it was just, it's just good to see the overall participation. It's good to see the mix of people that are just out there having fun. And then it's just, uh, yeah. uh, just great to, to see speaking, the youth. Oh, yeah. Speaking of mix. Oh. Uh, the youngest rider on the day was six years old and the oldest rider on the day was 87. So it's so pretty call awesome. Out those times there was a, a, a man, a, a man and a woman, right. That were in their way up in their eighties, right? Yes. I don't know what the times are. Oh, <laughs> we talked I about added, it, I I added it one time. I didn't write it down. But uh, yeah, just over uh, an hour now. I think it was. I think it was just not much over an hour. So yeah, it's it's interesting. Like the youngest rider, uh, and the oldest. Or no, the I'm sorry. The youngest female was 12, and she did it like an hour 23. And uh, the oldest male at 85 did it an hour 24. So it would have been, you know, they could have potentially rode mm -hmm. together. Yeah, uh, and and kept each other going. But, I, uh, I think we got to track them down as a guest too, because like, like I, I, I that'd be I'm, fun. that's that's incredibly inspiring when you go and you see the uh, go to the senior games or you go to some of these races and there's still people competing at that age. I just I, I think it's un, it's incredible. I can only hope. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, well, that's the one thing that we love about cycling is it helps keep us. Uh, young at heart and also uh in spirit and body and hopefully yeah. uh, you can just keep on going yeah so you can't so go. you gonna, you gonna do it again mike are you ever gonna sign up and go for it oh yeah you know yeah. i was actually considering doing it this year just uh but you know the cycle jerks i think i felt like it was 
it was more important to go there uh, as a podcast, especially after having the guys on early on. They offered that to yeah. us. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll definitely do it again for sure. But just just think by next year, we'll have a big staff, right? We'll have producers and all that. So we can go ride and they can actually do all the grunt work. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. We could use yeah. an editor if anybody yeah. wants to edit. Yeah. Hit me up. Well, <laughs> <laughs> people but, get uh, us yeah. diet pepsis and stuff and you know oh yeah i don't think yeah <laughs> fast forward to yeah. never yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a uh, good thing we love doing this right yeah no doubt well okay so um what else uh, you know we we really didn't get a chance to talk at all about the vuelta and uh some of the things going on there i mean it was an incredible uh, incredible few weeks there for American cycling. And it wasn't without drama. There was a bunch of, I mean, Jumbo Visma, you know, Jesus, they're just a powerhouse team. They can, they win, they won all three of the, of the major grand tours this year. And um, they've got, I mean, they've just, their, their roster is just ridiculous. And now they're talking about adding, quick steps so that's going to throw uh what remco in the mix and uh, oh, yeah. a bunch of other people yeah. i mean it's just insane but it's not all uh it's not all uh you know rainbows and unicorns over there um and we kind of saw that come to light when uh sep sep american by the way yeah sep coos um you know he established himself as the strongest rider of the Welta. And he, um, but he wasn't being supported by his teammates for a couple. There were like, maybe they were saying that they were supporting him, but then they were behaving differently, uh, on the course. And, uh, yeah, not that, not I that you need know. to gift wrap, not that you need to gift wrap a victory for somebody, but, um, you know, and that's not what happened, but there are team tactics involved with racing and the team wasn't working in, Sep's uh best interest there for a few days and they were taking some serious heat on social media i, I see i definitely will look at on the surface what i want is the you know the welta unchained and i want yes. to see the discussions in the bus right yeah. to see because well we don't you know that's again we've talked about this the problem is social media people can make shit up and it becomes truth right I'd yeah. like to know, and it certainly appears that it it was that at some point they had to come to, you know, they had this aha moment there where they said, oh, we better not fuck this up and we better let him win. Yeah. But I'd love to be the the people in the tour bus. I'd love to hear what they were saying. And if they just, you know, who knows? They just said, well, make sure we're second and third. Yeah. Right? And, and then we'll support you or something like that. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't think, I don't think Roglic or, uh, vinegar are thinking just make us second and third that's not how they think yeah you know they're winners and that's part of why they're so successful but but uh at the but same then what time, was the aha moment and why all yeah, of a sudden what stopped I, yeah i think something happened i don't know if it was the media backlash or maybe the director sportif stepped in and just said hey listen guys you know yeah and if anybody's worthy of support, I mean, geez, Sep, Sep has, he, he's a big part of their victories yeah. in the tour and the Giro this year and previous years. The guy's the strongest climber on planet earth, uh, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And um, he's just always right there at the critical moments to support the leaders. And it was just great to see him get his day. And, you know, uh, for me, it was kind of interesting because I've always had this really uh, high opinion of uh, Vinegar because he just seems like such a pro's pro and a great sportsman. And mm -hmm. uh, this was the first time where I I was thinking or I've where I felt like he he was taking a lot of heat during this yeah. uh, this moment of uncertainty. And uh, the social media comments, I mean, granted, anybody can comment on social media, so it could, yeah, be, yeah, yeah. Uh, could be anybody. But um, but yeah, there were a lot of comments about Jonas and him being a baby and all this stuff. And, it, and it's like uh, the guy has just been complete class 
ever since he emerged on the scene, his relationship with Pagasha, his biggest rival, as uh, you know, about as friendly and cordial as it could possibly be, considering you know they're going for the ultimate prize and. And he's always giving respect to his teammates. And I just feel like he's a real class act. And uh, But there was a stage where he just took off and didn't support the leader and yeah. kind of did his own thing. And uh, yeah, so it's interesting to see it all, all the chips fall the way they did. And then ultimately they did come together and Sip ended up winning it rightfully. And uh, I Spoiler think alert right, for right. anyone who's not all caught up, but <laughs> it's a little old at this point. Not everybody <laughs> waits six months to watch Unchained like you. Um, but uh, but anyway, so yeah, very exciting. Sepp Kuss becomes the fourth American to win a grand tour. So uh, he joins Lance Armstrong, Greg LeMond, and Chris Horner as the only, oh, yeah, uh, Horner. I forgot. only yeah. Americans to ever win a grand tour. So that's okay. some that's some great company, and uh, we're all very happy and excited for Sep. That's for sure. Okay, so Sep Coos, um, card carrying member, always have been right. I'm yeah. always, and matter of fact, I'm always pulling for the domestique more than the the the, the team leader. Uh huh. And definitely, what the hell is that? What was that? A marshmallow? Banana. Banana. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and. Uh, I think you want to talk about a class act like, you know, at no point, mm -hmm. whether they were attacking him or whether they were supporting him, he never called it out. You saw his mother at the end uh, talking to Vindigo and said he owes so much to you, blah, 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 yep. what, whatever he said. And just, I think, a, a, a super class act. So. Yeah. Did you Has see his comment on? about being a humble champion? Oh, no. What did he say? Yeah, it was really cool. He's like, you know, um, I'm so super proud to have won this. And uh, he gave all credit to his team. And then he said, um, this is not going to change who I am. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I want to be a humble champion and uh, I'm just going to get back to work. And uh, classic. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm, par end, I'm paraphrasing, you know, but yeah. yeah. You got the gist. Yeah. To that end, um, uh, bop, 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 bop. should he go on and be a go to team and be a leader or understand his role and be a continue to be a domestique and say, look, I had my day in the sun. Another one will come. What do you do? I think it's a good question. I think his humble nature might just lead him right back to domestic status. Um, or, you know, there's all, so I was just reading that Roglic is, is talking about breaking his contract and leaving the team. Yeah. So yeah. there might be an opportunity where maybe uh Sep becomes the guy for the Vuelta, you know, yeah. kind of like they I did just, with the Roglic. Yeah. I just go, I think that the, you know, unfortunately the pro Peloton is, uh, is maybe littered with, super you know uh number two guys or three guys the, the super domestiques that went and got lured away with a contract and never quite you know Mikel landa you know i think yep. uh, this is going to be real controversial because i'm i was a huge fan but i think richie some of richie port's best days when he, he was supporting Froome versus when he was off being the leader on his own and I think those are just the two that come come to mind. I just think that the that the true team leader is it's a different it's because they're cut from a different cloth. I think that they really are. And uh, and I'm all I'm a huge fan of domestics. I've said that, but I just think that it's a different mindset. It's probably a different level of athleticism. And I think he'd probably be. Better off just going back into that role. Like he's obviously well paid. I mean, I, I thought yeah. cyclists didn't make much money. They were talking about his his three homes that he has. So, right. Yeah. You know, he's not so, struggling. That's yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah. So you know, be happy with the role and to keep doing what you're doing and keep working hard. And you know, I I don't know. That's well, Roglic funny. is talking about going to Ineos, or uh, he's not talking about it, but people are speculating that he's going to end up on Ineos, and um. You know, that I mean, it's hard. I, I can't imagine leaving a super team like uh, Jumbo. I uh, like yeah. on your own, like 
because it's your idea. You're going to leave Jumbo Visma. Yeah. I mean, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how he, how his career goes. If he does leave the team, you know, he's had, he's had some really, uh, he's crashes a lot. You know, he, yeah. I, I always felt like he couldn't really keep it together as talented as he was. Um, and you know, he was a ski, wasn't he a ski jumper or something in his previous like life? That. Yeah, yeah. So, um, maybe that has something so to do with the crashing. crashing. Yeah. yeah. He knows all about it. He's good well, at it. But maybe it, you know, just involves him not being a hard uh, cyclist, you know, all of his life. He maybe he was right. a ski racer or whatever. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so that that shakeup. I really hope this quick step Visma merger doesn't happen. No, I know it's because it, uh, it. But uh, yeah, I it, that just I, because there's going to be too many people I think that suffer from that or find themselves without homes because there's just so much talent on both those. Well, they'll they'll relocate, you know. But it's, yeah. I think it's better when there's two, you know, like. Two powerhouses. Yeah, Remco's got a, I mean, he's got a good squad over there. And, um, you know, it was really interesting how he just popped that one day. He had one bad day. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. 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 On any Sunday, right? Yeah, but oh, then yeah. the next day he looked fantastic. He looked like Remco again. Yeah. The rest of the yeah. whole tour he did. But, uh, but, but anyway. it, it does, it does speak though to the, um, uh, the it the the depth of the team that's required because if you go right down the list of that Yumbo team, like so much attention is given to Vindigo, Roglic, and Sepkus. But like if you look at some of those, I, you know, again, I'm sitting here working yeah. at my desk, and and I've got the five hours of this wealth on watching everything. And you sit there and you go and okay, that's Robert Hessink on the front. Yeah. About an hour and a half later, I come back, I look up and go, he's still on the front, yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's the depth of that team. Yeah. And what it's just incredible. It just, well, it's funny. You just rattled off four absolute legends and uh, you didn't even mention Wout. Yeah. He's also yeah. on the team, you know? He's also on the team, <laughs> maybe yeah. the Maybe the best all-around rider there is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Laporte, it, it, Laporte. I mean, it just goes, just keeps going, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're incredible. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Roglic. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it, that's why we watch uh, these guys. You know, the diva element of it is definitely a big part of being a leader, I feel like. Okay? Yeah. Especially the Movistar really kind of brought that to light when we started watching those Movistar uh, Netflix specials. Just okay. how. The okay. Yeah. So yeah, Movie Star, and then we did Unchained. Now there's another one of um, is I'm drawing a blank on the name, but they they basically follow the EF uh, EF Pro team into the slipstream. Is it called? I don't know. You got to get on Peacock. Sounds good to me. It, yeah, oh, it's on it's Peacock. Like, yeah, I think it's in into the slipstream or something. If I could talk and Google at the same time, I'd look it up right now. Okay, but it is really it's only it's one one episode and i'm trying to figure out what, what year it is but like you can say what you will about jonathan vodders right yeah um but it there's a lot of on that and uh, a lot covering him and what you don't realize is you you talk about some of the french teams that have been around forever yumbo Vima, but this is the longest standing u.s base pro cycling team from garmin to Cannondale, to um, EF Pro. And I think that there's a couple of other big sponsors in there, but it's been around for, I think he said like 15 years. And it's yeah. the longest running US team. And so number one, props for that. Number two, it was founded based on racing clean, right? Yeah. And that was his whole, cause he had was doping and, and realized that he had come at a point in his life where he said like, what am I doing, right? Yeah. But what was cool, well, there's no doubt that there's talent on that team, right? But they just don't have that one super, like they got Paulus and stuff, but that one superstar. But listening to Jonathan Vodders on that thing, there's a couple of times in which he's 
like we've got three weeks and if we don't find a sponsor we're we're closing up doors and he's like the guy's crying on the t on the on the thing yeah and you realize how fragile that whole ecosystem is right so you, we're sitting here going oh we hope you know the quick step and jumbo visma you know doesn't merge but do they have a choice <laughs> you know are they merging because they just want to be more powerful or is it like we're going to lose a sponsor. We have no choice, right? It's, it's a, cause this, it was like, literally we have maybe three weeks. If we don't get a victory, we won't get a sponsor. Then we're going to be out of business. Right. right? Yeah. It's like, oh. But I think the challenge for American teams is different than European teams. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm delusional, but it just, you know, the fact that they're the longest running team at 15 years and it's a, you know, a wing and a prayer kind of situation um you know you just don't hear about stuff like that with the european teams and i don't yeah. think uh i mean maybe it is financial um insecurity with quick step although i can't imagine that that would be no i i don't i don't think so but i i mean i did hear yumbo visma was walking away i mean I, that uh what uh, yeah visma i think yumbo still yumbo or whatever what? I heard that they visma yeah yeah i'd heard that they said that we've accomplished our goal and they were leaving so, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's the risk you, you run. I think when you have a, although I don't know, you know, I was going to say when you, when you have a squad that deep and you're just dominating, you're just wrecking shop on everything. Yeah. Maybe somebody's like, yeah, maybe I should check out. <laughs> although you think you'd want to ride that train as long as you could. As long as you can, but Sky yeah. did the same thing, right? Yeah. Sky. Yeah. They both. Finishing up on that EF Pro, uh, um, I just saw that they actually just signed Markel Baloki, uh, Yashiva Baloki's son. Okay. So remember that infamous crash? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. And that yeah. guy was. He was uh, running for Giant then. Oh, was he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that was the was, crash that sent, was it Lance into the. Oh, no. Crossing, what, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was yeah, the one. It was, it was Lance. Yeah. Yeah. That was the one, but they, they said his son has got all the, all the markings of what his father had in terms of his time trialing and climbing. And so, you know, maybe they found their young, rising young star. So that was kind of cool. I mean, I think they got, uh, Paulus is, I mean, he's a very formidable, formidable guy. I might be oh, just yeah. guilty of hom homerism here, but, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's still, I don't think he's reached his, his, uh, plateau. And no, um, no, so there's a lot of promise there. Yeah, but yeah, I think the Vodders thing. I've been critical of him. I think it was in Unchained where he basically gave that speech to the team about we got three weeks to do something here. We might be done. Yeah, that's <laughs> just yeah. that's just the way. Yeah. yeah, like I think as a writer, you just don't want to know those things. It's like just don't tell me about your business. Do your do your business, you know, yeah, it, that, that shouldn't that be wasn't on me. The motivational, yeah. That wasn't the motivational speech I would have given, but in an interview, when you're talking like when in this front of the camera, it was like, Oh shit. Yeah. Um, right. But he actually did comment though. He said, it's a real problem that he said, because a lot of our guys, like he said, uh, Ricoberto Oran and a few others that have been with him forever. He said, they're never looking further down the road because he goes, Jonathan Vodders always pulls it off. <laughs> you know, so they're never actually looking for their next move when they're right. that close to demise. And these guys are like, ah, no, they, they just, and which is maybe good. So in their mind, they're like, but he's like, in their mind, they're not worrying about it. But he's yeah. like, I, I kind of wish they would, you know, pay attention because they say I always pull it off and it's a ton of pressure, but I'm, you know, there's going to come a day maybe when he doesn't pull it off. Right. But here they so, are, here we are, and they've got another sponsor, and that yeah. whole speech is like, yeah. yeah, what was, what, what is the racer going to get out of that speech? Yeah, that okay. is going to help with any type of strategic thing, and you know, you want your your racers to be sleeping well, getting rested, and if they're worried about, oh, geez, you know, just the team. Or yeah. Next year, should I be should I be putting my name out there? You know, should I be looking around? I I don't know. I just yeah, I thought that was very very peculiar way to motivate racers. Yeah. But yeah.
anyway all right well into the slipstream we'll go i got to check it out i didn't even know definitely about check it. it out i i may have the name wrong slipstream is in there somewhere yeah uh but it's definitely definitely worth the hour or the 48 minutes that it is it's a, it's a good it's a good sn- snapshot of the season cool and some newfound respect from some for some of these riders Rigo yeah. Berto Oran is another one that I would have said probably was better as a domestique or leader for everyone else. And then you realize what this guy went through after one of his big crashes and how much he came back. And if this guy gets a top 10 in the, in the Walta or something, it's like, shit, he earns it. I mean, they yeah. said he's still fucked up from his crash that he, you know, uh, that he had. So, you know, props. So newfound respect for some of those riders. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we get out of here, we should probably uh, give um, our proper respect to Peter Sagan, who uh, after an incredible professional career, calling it, calling it a career. And yeah, yeah, boy, we want to talk about somebody who changed the game and in, in many ways, you know, one of the most flamboyant riders to ever do it. And just the personality just off the charts with this guy uh the hair the body the there's just like a lot of things going on with this guy that were just he it was hard to take your eyes off of him and yeah. uh the talent was just undeniable and mm-hmm. uh you know never uh i don't think never one to miss a meal say that <laughs> uh he did not have your typical cyclist body um but he still got it done and uh yeah he's he was an amazing amazing talent and um i think an inspiration to a lot of people uh you know we had ben frederick on that was talking about you know it helped him like uh peter sagan talking about how he takes care of his his body and how he eats and um and uh so yeah incredible career um and a showman uh, i mean yeah. you know he, he how many of these guys do, do other companies really want as their, you know, as their spokesman necessarily? And there's, you know, he's riding up into onto the backs of cars and onto roofs to put the bike on the bike rack or pulling wheelies and all right, uh, yeah. So I mean, it was like I said, he was really hard to keep um, keep your eyes off of him. But uh, you know, he had a he was a cyclocross uh, racer as a kid, and then got into mountain bike racing, and then uh man how many he, in one of the classics when Conchalera went down wasn't he right behind him and like bunny hopped him and kept going yeah. or something like that yep. but, yeah yeah so, so uh just looking here 121 victories in road racing pretty incredible uh they called him pito peter the great three pete tourminator um three pete for the uh the world championships uh 2015 16 and 17 guys yeah what a career i actually had the I actually had the pleasure of riding with him one time no kidding sort of yeah 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 this is before you saved my ass um <laughs> b- before i met you uh cannondale was courting me before i opened the bike shop uh huh. And I got invited. They it was after the tour of California, and we went to the team was going to do a, a post ride for special guests. And I got invited to go over there and ride with the team. We left out a sports basement. Awesome. Um, in uh, the Presidio, and just did the like the short, easy uh, paradise loop with them. And he was a clown then too. I mean, we were going up one climb, and he kept going. I never. He kept going up to this guy that was in front of him, and he kept tapping his back wheel with his front wheel. And the guy kept looking around, like, "What the hell's going on?" <laughs> and he must have done this three or four times. Oh uh, boy! But yeah, he was a goof. He was he was fun to ride with, and he was a goof when they were doing the introductions and stuff. So it was, was kind of cool. Yeah, that's the thing kinda I loved cool. about him and his career was that, you know, cycling so serious. Everybody's very disciplined, and you know, and here you got this guy. Yeah riding one-handed wheelies up a climb, yeah. you know, <laughs> with his tongue hanging out or whatever, you know, but uh, cool. yeah, tremendous career and uh, he's going to be missed for sure. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, so, okay. Um, so who do we got coming? So we can who who are some of the guests coming up? Oh, right. Yeah. Next week we have Matt Fitzgerald, who uh, wrote uh, "How Bad How Do You bad Want do you It?" Want amongst and others, he's got a bunch 000. of yeah, yeah a bunch of other books. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be a really really good one, I think. Yeah, yeah. If you guys, folks, if you haven't had a chance, just check out. It's just Google Matt Fitzgerald, and all his books will come up. And I'd advise you to read some of them, but I've I've harped on it. But you know, how bad do you want? It's amazing. Yeah. And then we have a guy that um, uh, coming up, which I'm excited about, is the the attorney, the bike attorney. Yeah. Um, Kyle Smith, um, you know, cause, it, and I think that very much relates to, uh, our conversation with Alan Shield, which was, uh, of the Danville police, which was very much our, our number one downloaded episode for reasons <laughs> unknown, but that's good. Well, I don't know. So, it wasn't oh, the uh, episode. It was the clip. The clip went oh. viral. The clip of him talking about, uh, you know, cyclists and on the road and the interactions with yeah. cars that went viral oh, okay. yeah that got kind of crazy uh yeah yeah but yeah he's yeah so the lawyer's going to be interesting um you know uh we got some old we got some old timer mountain bikers coming too right yeah 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 for sure we got uh well i mean i don't know if we want to go all into it like that no, uh, no, I'm just saying but yeah we're done i'm excited I'm, 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 We've got some legends yeah. of mountain biking uh, coming on and some of the forefathers. So that's going to be really interesting. Talk about the history of the mountain bike and their role in it. The, tra and the train keeps her rolling. I think we just keep getting better, Mike. So it's good. It's, I'm excited. It's hard to, it's hard to think back uh, when the mountain bike first kind of uh, was established, but it was, you know, it started out as a beach cruiser that they started putting some 10 speed parts on. I mean, that's, yeah. that's where it's began. And, and now here we are with, uh, you know, these downhill bikes and cross country bikes, trail bikes, enduro bikes, dirt jumpers. I mean, the segment of mountain biking is wild and it all yeah. started as a modified beach cruiser. So clunkers. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you haven't seen it, go watch the movie Clunkers. The, yeah, that's the a good names, one. the the names that are mentioned in there. Yeah. Richie and Fisher and all these guys that they yeah. were all at one point friends and trying to push the edge and in their dungarees and no helmets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As we and as we go all padded up, right? A lot of so. uh a lot of questionable substances were involved too, I think. Uh, <laughs> to get that creative juices flowing. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so we've got some uh some fun stuff like that coming up. So uh yeah, good stuff. Cool. Right. Let's uh let's wrap it up. Peace. I want to thank everybody for supporting the podcast. If uh if you're interested in taking it to another level, you can support us at cyclejerkspodcast.buzzsprout.com. Hit that subscribe button. If you like what we're doing, uh, give us a five star review. That really helps us in the grand scheme of things. So uh, hey, appreciate appreciate all. Yeah, this. and if there's something we're not that that we do that you don't like, let us know that too. Right? We're just yeah. two two dudes in in our rooms just babbling. But <laughs> some people got some feedback yesterday at the at the um, challenge, and it was mostly positive. But yeah, it, it, we want to know because we want to keep doing this and making you guys happy. Yeah, you can hit us on uh, Instagram, you know, with uh, with some feedback or thoughts, ideas, any great stories out there that you feel like we should we should maybe connect with somebody. We'd appreciate it. You could also send us an email at Cycle Jerks Podcast twenty twenty three at Gmail, and uh, we'll we'll respond. We'll get back to you. So, right on. Uh, all right, thanks everybody. Appreciate you, and we'll right. see you next week. Thanks, Dave. Take care of that cat, Mike. <laughs>